Thomas Keegan with blogtalkradio.com forward slash election channel. Also, libertarianprogressive.com, where you can see all our 50, well, we're going to have 50 plus interviews displayed there that you can watch and listen of independent and third party candidates who are the only alternate choice in their districts. And, um, and that's very important to know because there's a lot more going on this election season besides Trump versus Clinton. And uh, there's a body of Congress that you can vote for every two years. And uh, there's 435 members in the U.S. House uh, elected every two years. It was designed that way on purpose to be the least resistant, most peaceful, and quickest path to reform in our democratically elected republic. And, you know, I just want to know what my options are, and I want you to know what your options are. And today we have an interview with... Joe Manchik of the Green Party for the U.S. House of Representatives in District Number 12 for Ohio, and, uh, and that's he's going to be on the ballot this November 8, 2016. Now, if you're in Ohio, District 12, you can be very interested. Even if you're not in District 12 in Ohio, um, just like you know how the Koch brothers. The billionaires, they're going around funding all the candidates that they want to fund. Uh, and, and they have a very big interest in the House of Representatives because they're the ones who create and pass laws like the TPP and uh, the NSA and um, and going to war in Syria and et cetera. So uh, whether you have a direct interest in District 12 in Ohio, um, you might be interested in this U.S. Uh, House of Representatives position because it's he's going to be able to introduce things um, on behalf of us all, and uh, you know it's a two-year term. So, Joe, welcome to LibertarianProgressive.com, and good evening, and glad to have you on this program this evening, sir. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate you having me on here. All right, great. And we're also, um, if anyone wants to call in, we have our guest call-in number. Going to open up the phones later. If anyone wants to call in, feel free to do so. Area code 602-753-1596. Again, that's area code 602-753-1596. Again, we're talking with Joe Manchik, and you can visit his website at manchikforcongress.wordpress.com. M-A-N-C-H-I-K-F-O-R congress.wordpress.com. And, Joe, I'm going to ask you to uh, give us your platform here, but let me just read your first paragraph. My motivation to run for Congress, posted on January 30th, 2016. Um, And uh, it says here, community-based economics, corporate control, decentralization, ecological wisdom, feminism and gender equality, future focus and sustainability, grassroots democracy, nonviolence, personal and global responsibility, reality versus propaganda, reasoning, respect for diversity, social justice, and equal opportunity. And, uh, and there's much more on here, but uh, you say here, I'm going to change the world, and this is my plan. And so please tell us um, your plan to change the world, sir. Well, my plan involves the Green Party of the United States, and this year we have many Green Party candidates running for Congress, both for the House and the Senate. And our plan is to restore power to the people. Uh, The way we want to do that is get a bunch of Greens in Congress, along with uh, Dr. Jill Stein and Ajamu Baraka, our vice presidential candidate, who will uh, preside over the Senate. And that's how we plan on taking our country back from the Democratic Republican Duopoly Party. Yeah, it starts with, and you're going to need the Congress. And I, I, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, there's a little bit of delay, and I didn't mean to interrupt. I was going to say the Congress might be, um, you know, less divisive of a uh, a strategy. I, I mean, I wish all the well to the presidential candidates, but that's why. On this show, we're focusing on on the Congress, and um, you know it's a less partisan, less divisive. You're the only third party option in your district, and 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 we're interviewing a lot of districts like that. And so, yeah, I was just going to ask you uh, about um, 
to c- continue with your thought there, so I'm sorry, there must be a, just a little bit of delay, and I did not mean to interrupt, but uh, uh, please continue with the plan and um, and tell us a little bit about your district afterwards. Uh, my district's pretty well gerrymandered to keep the Republicans in power in that district. Uh, my Republican opponent, Pat Tiberi, has been in office since the year 2000. And uh, the the borderline for the district is, is really weird. Uh, it's, it's mostly made up of Republican voters, and that's how he's uh, been able to hold on to that seat in Congress for so many years. Yeah, it sounds like they're scared of a little bit of competition. Isn't that what Republicans um, are supposed to uh, be all about, is competition? Well, yeah, they, they're, like, really scared of uh, competition, especially in this district. They're actually running two Republican candidates against me, uh, plus uh, a Democrat. Uh, so yeah. what's uh, your Pat approach? Tiberi. I'm sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. I just can't say well, what's I was just, just going to say that uh, Pat Tiberi was, uh, you know, he was uh, he ran in the primary unopposed, and then after the primary election, once they found out that uh, I was in the primary also, and uh, uh, and I uh, was nominated by the Green Party to, for this position, they decided to have put a write-in candidate to run on the Republican ticket also. So I've got, I'm running against two Republicans and one Democrat. Now, the write-in, not many people are probably going to know about. So when people go to the uh, ballot or see the ballot, they're going to see your name and then the Republican and Democrat. Is that right? Right, right, right. But there's there's a lot of Republicans that don't really care for Pat Tiberi that much. You know, most of the people I've spoken with in, in this district uh, really don't like the guy. So I think they put him on there uh, just to take votes away. You know, well, I think they put this uh, second write-in candidate on the ballot as uh, an option for the Republicans who want to remain Republicans and uh, not vote for Pat Tiberi. Yeah, guy. try to split the opposition. Um, so Yeah, yeah, they any... want to take votes away from me, basically. Have you been in any debates? Or are there debates coming up in your district? I have a debate scheduled on the 29th of September with uh, the League of Women Voters. I contacted them uh, earlier this year, and they agreed to do the debate, and it's scheduled for the 29th. Now, I really don't know if my uh, opponents are going to show up for this or not. I haven't heard anything out of them at all. Nothing. But you're definitely going to show up. Oh, definitely, for sure. Yeah. And you're not scared to debate. Oh, no, no. I'm looking forward to it, actually. And and it, and you would be willing to do multiple debates? Certainly, yes. And if you, and if you were the incumbents, you would be willing, uh, you would promise to debate, um, you know, if you were elected and in two years from now, you would promise to debate any future challengers? Absolutely. I don't have a problem okay. with that. Now, um, so since you're kind of in a gerrymandered Republican district, I mean, I'm sure there's a consensus. Maybe the Republicans don't agree with everything, but you're not running for president. You're running for Congress. You're going to be in a body of 435 people. Um, I'm sure there are some consensus ideas that you could, uh, you know, gather support with. And um, so, what would be uh, your approach to your district to say that you're the best option for everybody, oh, really? even a Republican? Yeah, yeah. The main reason to vote for me over my uh, Republican opponent is because uh, Pat Tiberi has voted to, for the passage of the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement. He's voted to fast-track it through Congress, and he's also used his position with the House Ways and Means Committee to coerce a lot of Republicans and Democrats alike to vote to fast-track the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement through Congress so that uh, they can uh, get it passed and have Barack Obama sign it during the lame duck session of Congress after the election. Now, are there any, um, do you think there's any, because maybe people are wiser than they seem, but do you think there's any misconceptions about what someone might think as you running as a Green Party candidate, if they were a Republican, possibly? What do you mean? 
like uh, that you'd be too socialist or, or something like that against competition or, you know, you don't like small businesses or, or something like that? Because no, I'm, I'm all standard. for small, small businesses. I, you know, I was a small businessman. You know, I, I ran a business for 30 years. I designed and built voice and data communications networks, and uh, I've basically been put out of business by my competition uh, because they were selling Chinese products manufactured by slave labor. Yeah, it's hard to compete against slave labor. So, um, yeah, yeah, so (laughs) small and mid-sized businesses. um, So, I mean, because I think that's a – kind of a hallmark everyone you know people say that the one of the biggest employers in this country is small mid-sized businesses the american dream is for a lot of people is to create their own business um and uh so what would you do to uh advocate for small and mid-sized businesses for the usa um well when bill clinton signed nafta into law uh i believe that was in 94 it pretty much uh, sent a lot of jobs out of the country where uh, slave labor is still legal to this very day today. So that's that's where most of our businesses went, or most of our jobs went, is uh, out of the country. You know, I remember Ross Perot talking about that giant sucking sound of American jobs leaving the country if the next president signed NAFTA into law, and sure enough, that's what what Bill Clinton did, he uh, you know signed that into law, and that that caused the closure of uh, you know thousands of manufacturing jobs all across the United States and put millions of people out of work because those jobs went to foreign nations where slavery is still legal, legal today. So you know what I'd like to see happen is uh, trade tariffs reinstated for uh, products imported to this country where they're manufactured in nations where slavery is still legal today that's that's one of the things i'd like to get pushed through i think i think uh, richard nixon sort of initiated that plan when he went over to china back in the the 70s and uh got the trade agreements started with china and then it's expanded into nafta after that and uh, things just kept getting worse and worse in this country for jobs and for american workers yeah, so when people say make America great again, it's hard to determine what point in the past that they mean to, uh, you know, it was great. I mean, one part you could say maybe one point in history would have been NAFTA or the trade deals, you know. Um, so it's uh, it's been unprecedented. I mean, America has always traded with other countries, but you know, we traded in a more fair way before NAFTA. I mean, I think it was even admitted NAFTA was meant to, you know, help other, I mean, maybe with good intentions, but I mean, part of the reasoning was to help bring up third world countries at the expense, you know, of, of Americans. Yeah. That's basically what it came down to. Yeah. And, And who knows? I don't know if it's really bringing up the other countries too much, but, uh, so um so that's small business that's trade what about uh you know um privacy uh civil liberties um the justice system you know the constitution the bill of rights um you know since you're in a conservative district i i think a lot of people that might be conservative uh you know you would think value uh, those principles that are in our bill of rights the fourth amendment you know the first amendment um Etc. Uh, do you think um, you, you know when you take an oath to swear and protect the Constitution? What what does that what would that mean to Joe Manchick? Well, uh, what, what do you what do you actually mean? I'm not sure what you're getting at. Well, um, so uh, what about um, uh, as far as the uh, balance between security versus privacy? That debate. Um, uh, you know, with the um, NSA, uh, Homeland Security, uh, y- you know, um, the TSA at the airports, um, you think there's uh, more security de- theater or do you think uh, we need to spend more on security? Do you think Americans um, 
civil liberties uh, are getting the due process that it deserves? No, I think our liberties are going by the wayside pretty much. Uh, you know, I, I've known for years that our government has had the ability to monitor our phone calls. Uh, you know, being in the telecommunications business, uh, I, I had the opportunity to work at companies where we actually install the equipment to monitor phone calls. Uh, you know, the FBI or the NSA, they can be sitting at their computer and just punch in anyone's phone number and listen to their phone calls right now. I mean, that's common knowledge, I always thought, but uh, Edward Snowden sort of brought that out in the open for everyone to see. And, uh, you know, I was kind of surprised that everyone was shocked by that information that Edward Snowden released because, to me, I thought it was just common knowledge. But, uh, you know, I'm really glad that he brought that to light for everyone to see. Yeah, and I think Jill Stein said recently she would um, hire him in her administration, actually. Absolutely, Uh, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, that's exactly what she said. Yeah, And and uh, I think a lot of people probably do suspect, I mean, but there's one thing, having them listen for terrorists, but another thing, when they're using it for more than terrorism, they're using it for, like, uh, you know, the war against drugs, um, you know, so they're expanding the reach of what the original intent was for, and exactly. um, it, and you're still supposed to get a warrant to be able to use something against you criminally, uh, so... Yeah, but they they, they abuse the, their authority. You know, the NSA just goes in and they do whatever they want. They, you know, they don't get warrants. They just do whatever they feel like doing. If, and if they want to spy on you, they just do it. You know, they, there's there's no stopping them. They've got absolute control over everything. Now, one thing I think that um, let me ask you a question, Joe. What and we're again we're talking with Joe Manchik, uh, Green Party, uh, U.S. House District 12, Ohio. He's a candidate who's going to be on the ballot uh, November 8th, 2016. And um, so Edward Snowden, he was uh, some would call him a whistleblower. Um, there's been other whistleblowers, uh, you know, I'd throughout the decades. Do you think there should be more? Maybe he wouldn't have had to have uh, approached this the way he had if there were more protections for whistleblowers. I mean, um, you a lot of people would call him a hero, and uh, and it you know it's I think it's important to our system to have people that are able to speak up if there's something that they see wrong. Um, I mean, there shouldn't be anything Absolutely. wrong with that. How can we improve? So. And so, would, should there be more safeguards, more of a process um, for whistleblowers in the system? Absolutely. Yeah, like Chelsea Manning is another example of uh, of a hero that's been locked away in prison for exposing American war crimes. And, you know, that's just wrong. People who expose America's crimes should be exonerated and, and they should be you know, allowed, allowed to reveal what's going on without any fear of being uh, imprisoned over it. You know, it's like what Edward Snowden says. Uh, you know, if, if you're being, uh, if, uh, I can't remember exactly how he said it. He said something like, uh, if if uh, exposing a crime is considered a crime, you're being ruled by criminals. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. And, um now, uh, what about corporations and their influence in our country? Um, uh, how how can we stop that? I mean, is it just literally up to people to hold their representatives accountable and elect new people? Or if enough people were elected, um, is it just the people who's in Congress and they, you know, if you elect enough good people, they just simply wouldn't be bought out? Or do we actually need some laws to uh, ensure, to to regulate how people act um, as far as uh, our representatives go? (laughs) That's that's a big, ugly mess we've got today. Uh, With the passage of uh, Citizens United and then uh, the Supreme Court declaring that Citizens United was acceptable under the Constitution of the United States, 
it pretty much legalized bribery throughout our entire government, all three branches of the government, you know, the, the legislative, judicial, and uh, the executive branch. Uh, corporations, multinational corporations included, can actually own our government, and they do own our government today, and they are running our government today, and they're running it for the corporate profits of the military industrial complex and the multinational oil corporations that go in and steal the oil from the nations that the United States occupies. We've got, I believe, over 600 military bases throughout the world, and that's just totally insane. The, the entire purpose of most of those bases is to protect the oil corporations and the employees of the oil corporations that go in and they steal the oil and the gas out of the the countries where the United States is occupied. And that's truly shameful in my view. America's wars today are just wars for oil. That, that's what's going on in Syria today. The, the oil fields of Iraq extend into Syria. I mean, Syria is right next to, to Iraq. And, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just all for oil. That's, that's what the war... It, is all about. That's what our, the Iraq War was all about, and that's what what Obama is doing today. He's 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 uh, committing treason by sending in troops into Syria to uh, to overthrow the the sovereign government of Bashar al-Assad in Syria, so that corporations like British Petroleum and Aramco can go in and steal the oil. That's what it's all about. And I'm sick of it. I, it this has got to end. It's just yeah. insane, and it's truly shameful that the United States is engaged in the business of starting wars for oil throughout the world. we got to put it well, to it, a stop. It is a strategic location. I heard that, um, I think I saw in 60 Minutes or something, I mean, when, before Dick Cheney got into office in the first um, George W. Bush administration, they were already you know, drawing the blueprints of how they would divvy up the oil fields in Iraq, you know, even before yeah. 9-11. Yeah. I mean, if there wasn't oil in the Middle East, would we be there? I mean, there's lots of places that have human rights violations, but we're not there. We're only in the places that happen to have oil also. That's what America's wars are all about, stealing oil, making so, multinational now, oil corporations wealthy. That's what America's wars are all about, plus enriching the corporate profits of the military-industrial complex that manufactures the weapons of war. Now, some people have somewhat recognized that, even though it sounds cynical. So their solution is, let's frack here in the U.S. instead. Um, so what, what do you think about fracking, or, or what... May, or maybe in a more positive way of asking, what is a solution so to get off our so we can be more energy independent? And I, you know, I assume being more energy independent would make us um, safer. Yeah, exactly. That's that's what the Green Party is really all about. We want we want to see a massive expansion of solar and wind power technology. Well, let me rephrase that. We want to see a massive expansion of American manufactured solar and wind power technology. Uh, what it's going to do is bring, going to bring millions of jobs for Americans in the industry of uh, producing energy from the sun and from the wind, primarily. That's what we want to do. And when we, we get off of oil and we're not relying on these oil or fossil fuels, uh, it will essentially make wars for oil obsolete. So we and maybe stop, our, spending, stop spending, stop yeah, spending billions of could. dollars on, on wars for oil. That's what's ruining this country is all the money we're spending on, on wars for oil. It's ridiculous. Yeah, as I say, maybe our military could even lead the way in that effort. I mean, after all, they're like one of the biggest blocks or groups of organizations that uses oil and if they could yes. be transitioned exactly you know, so maybe in essence you're um you know you want a strong national defense and one of your national defense strategies is actually to get us off our addiction to oil and and help exactly. us with our federal budget as well so 
realistically, I mean, some people say solar, you know, what can solar do? I mean, I know Germany is pretty much um, pretty reliant or, or pretty independent on solar, but is solar pretty realistic for the United States? I mean, can we actually? Yeah, yeah, convert? absolutely. I, I believe Costa Rica is 100 percent operating on uh, solar and wind power technology today. And Scotland is also. Scotland yeah, these... uh, put up a, a lot of wind generators uh, out in uh, out in the ocean, I believe, or in the English Channel, and uh, they're getting most of their electricity from wind power today. Almost, I believe most most all of their electricity comes from wind power in Scotland today. So you know, it's it's, it's really a doable thing. Uh, we only have to cover a small percentage of the the, the earth in order to uh, generate enough electricity for the entire planet. There's, uh, I, I believe, enough enough sunlight falls on the Earth in one day that if we could capture it, or just capture a small portion of it, you know, we, we'd be able to, to power our planet on just sunlight alone. And I think enough sunlight falls upon the planet to power the world for 27 years. In one day, I think I saw that on your website. I mean, um, there's it showed like a little block or, or a pixel <laughs> of like, um, and and if that was one, you know, if if you were in person, it would be huge. But but you know, it's a small portion of the United States. If that little pixel or or you know, a couple little pixels were the, the, all the solar cells that could actually power the entire world for you know some period of time and uh so that is really interesting and germany who's more northern hemisphere gets less sunlight than us i mean is That's you right. know on their way to doing it so we could probably it seems like what you're saying cut our military budget or actually d- can divert that into solar and actually it would have the same implications i mean um it would make us safer and uh, make us more self-reliant. I mean, I guess absolutely, the only absolutely, point. yeah, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. we, you know, we could cut our military budget by fifty percent, and we would still have the largest military budget of any nation on this planet. Yeah, and what would you do with that fifty percent? I guess you could spend that on solar, right? Yeah, exactly. That's what we want to do. We want to cut the military budget and start investing our, our money in, in solar and wind power technology, especially American manufactured solar and wind power technology to put Americans you know, to I've, work. I've never thought about it, but I just thought about it now. That instead of saying cutting the military budget, because a lot of Republicans hate to hear that. Just say you want to, you know, change the military budget um, and make 50 percent of it, actually, which would be a good thing for our national defense, is just to use it to, you know, make solar. And, uh, exactly. And that exactly. Would, instead, of giving, yeah. instead of giving Lockheed Martin billions of our dollars to manufacture an airplane, give, give them a billion dollars to manufacture some solar panels. Or there set up a factory to build solar panels. I mean, at the very least, you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, we it'd be going in the right direction. Um, I mean, it'd be nice to see small and mid-sized businesses have, you know, not no bid contracts for it. But at the very least, I mean, you know, that would be in the right direction. It seems like so. Yeah, that's a good national security policy without cutting the military budget one cent. You know, and uh, and it'd probably have better results. And um, and there would be some side benefits of maybe a better environment too, just as a side thought there. But um, so th- th- let me ask you just something just out of the blue here. What, what do you think um, of our uh, NASA or S- space department? Um, y- y- do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, I really haven't concerned myself with NASA that much. Uh, you know, I, what they do is pretty interesting, I think. I'm not sure if we're getting the right bang for the buck that we spend with NASA. Uh, and I'm not really sure exactly what they're into. You know, most of our projects are probably for the military that we don't know anything about. 
So, you know, so that goes into probably... accountability and transparency. I mean, w- what do you think about accountability and transparency in the government? Because we probably don't know a lot of stuff that they're doing. Transparency in the government? <laughs> it seems like it's reversed. They know all yeah. about us, but, but we don't yeah, know about no. them. <laughs> That's that's right. Yeah, it's like the, they they don't want the American people to know anything about what they're doing. You know, there, there is no transparency in the government. They they pretty much go along and do whatever they want. They, uh, our government is is run by multinational corporations today. Well, how and, can we make informed decisions if we don't know what's happening? We cannot. We we don't have the ability to do it because we we just don't know what our government's doing anymore. They don't want us to know what they're doing. It's a it's it's a secret. It's a Bob. it's a corporate it's corporations took over the government, you know, when when they passed Citizens United in 2010. And and they they've just been running the country ever since and uh we we don't have any say in what our government does anymore. Our government just takes our tax money and starts wars so that Multinational oil corporations can get wealthy. There, there's no transparency in what our government does anymore. They just take our money and do whatever they want with it. There's no accountability at the Pentagon. The Pentagon hasn't been accounted. They, they haven't been a. There's been no accounting at the Pentagon for decades. We don't know what they do with our money. Yeah, and you know what's funny is the Republicans all act like alpha males, you know, saying, like, we want a strong military. Well, I would say it's the opposite of strong to have corporations running everything and not, you know, know what's going on. If you really are truly strong, you know, you're going to stand up for, you know, what's right and, um, you know, and what's principled and, uh, you know, in a democratically elected republic, I mean – you know, for the principles that, you know, this country is supposed to be about. I mean, that's real strength um, if they want a strong country. And um, so uh, a lot of it's just rage. So well, what about, uh, let's see here, um, what about fracking? Uh, do you think fracking is a good idea? No, absolutely not. We've got to stop fracking. Golly, that, that, that's one of the worst things going today in the United States. Sure, it's, it's it's producing a lot of gas, natural gas. I think that's primarily why they, they frack our country. But, but the way they do it, they put these toxic chemicals down in the ground and then they explode them to, to frack the, the land so that the, the gas leaks out into the, the pipes they've got buried into the ground. But at the same time, that, this toxic Putting in the ground to frack is is polluting our water sources all over the country, and, and in some places the, the natural gas will even seep into people's wells, and they're you know the, the what's coming out of their tap with the water is is natural gas, it's it's contaminating our water supply, so we got we got to stop fracking. It's it's, it's that's a terrible thing. Yeah, it's almost like, to me, it's almost as common sense as smoking. I mean, you know, if you choose to do it, you choose to do it, but you have to know it's bad for you. I mean, and I I wasn't 100% sure on it, but I saw this documentary about a couple months ago, and I wanted to look more into it, give it a fair shot here. There's this documentary called Leaking Frack Wells Are Not Rare. And, um, again, it's called Leaking Frack Wells Are Not Rare. And so anyone can YouTube that or whatever. But um, uh, it's yeah, it it, it it almost reminds me of when you were talking about Ross Perot and that you know, and, and he would always bring up like charts and stuff. I, I could imagine like Ross Perot having all these charts and graphs because when you watch this little documentary, it it has like graphs of how fracking is done and it shows the layers of the earth and. And, you know, and it has a little drill going down in the cartoon like kind of graph, and it it just shows the oil, you know, the gas is, and and totally you can't imagine how, you know, they can contain it from getting into the aquifers. It seems almost impossible to do. I mean, it is impossible. Um, yeah. yeah. So I mean, I think anyone watch, you know, that you know, or see the charts and stuff. I mean, I mean, it's pretty convincing. I mean, the way they try to seal it up, it's, 
you know, they put concrete around a tube that's like drilled and, and you know, put into a hole and, and supposedly nothing's going to go around concrete. Everyone knows concrete easily cracks and especially with the movements of the earth. Um, yeah, it's so now um, let's see here. Let me ask you this. Is there any um, past or present people? Uh, I always ask everyone this just to kind of see their perspective for this question. Who's some of your favorite and I know there's a lot of people you could say, but who's some of your favorite people that you think of right now, um, past or present, elected or not? Past or present, elected or not. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> as far as elected, I can't really think of uh, too many people that have been elected, that I've got a lot of respect for. Uh, you know, all of our politicians in Washington are pretty much a bunch of crooks today. Everybody, mm-hmm. in, everybody in you know Congress is on the take. They're just there to make money. That's the that's the only thing they're there for is is to make multinational corporations wealthy. Yeah, they're, <laughs> and, they see it as a stepping stone. Yeah. Yeah. The whole purpose of getting elected is just to make multinational corporations wealthy today. That's you know all the Democrats and Republicans they work for the multinational corporations that own them. That, that's just the way it is today. Yeah, it reminds me of that monkey song. You know, I'm not your stepping stone. I mean, that's what people should be saying to these you know Congress people. Um, we're not your stepping stone. Say just you know sometimes they don't even finish their term. I mean, if they can jump off to the next thing um well um now, so we've covered quite a few topics here i mean foreign policy uh solar which is among us the, you know your strategy for you know the defense of the united states of america um, corporations uh civil liberties small businesses trade what about um health care i mean what's your stance on health care what, what do you think we should do for that we we need a, a single payer universal health care system in, in the United States. The American people do not need insurance companies. We need quality health care, and the only thing insurance companies do is they steal money from us for shoving paperwork around. There's nothing much else that they do. Uh, the top people at, at the insurance corporations get, you know, millions of dollars in bonuses every year. Why? Why do we need them to do that? We just need health care. We don't need health insurance companies. I, uh, what, what I'd like to see passed is uh, House Resolution, uh, is, is resolu- let me find it here. I believe it's 676. Uh, I've got that on my website under domestic policy. Let me pull that up here. It's uh, uh, the Medicare for all, I think you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, Medicare for all. Yeah. Single payer health care. Let me I believe it's six seventy six. But uh Yeah, yeah, House Resolution six seventy six. The the US House started working on this after uh, the Affordable Care Act, or Obamacare, was uh, passed in uh, 2010, I believe. And um, the the House started working on this, and they've got pretty much all of the details hammered out to make it an, uh, a real thing for the American people. It's like um, Medicare for all, where if you need health care, you just go to your doctor, and it's covered. One way we can uh, fund this is by ending America's ugly wars for oil once again. You know, there's there's billions of dollars spent on wars that we don't need. And once we uh, get those out of the way, we'll have some money to spend on the American people for health care. So, yeah, and how many people wouldn't go bankrupt anymore also? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really shameful that 
that there's so many Americans that can't afford health care, and then they get sick, and they, they go in a hospital, and then they're devastated by the bills. And people go bankrupt over their health care, which, which that should never happen. People shouldn't have to worry about health care if they get sick. That's, that's just wrong. Most of the civilized countries in this world have health care for people. You know, and it's most of the first by... world countries do, yeah. Most of the first world countries also have multiple party systems as well. So maybe that's right. why they have it. Yeah, right. We're in, we're the only country that has a duopoly. In fact, I mean, if you look at you know the top twenty first quote unquote first world countries, so you know we're not talking about Argentina here or some other socialist countries. You know, we're comparing it to first world countries and a lot of exactly. uh, those countries it's easier to start a small business a mid-sized business so they're very you know in some sense free market i guess they just separate some things that are in the commons versus other things that are totally free markets and um so you think i mean so are you for the free market what do you think about when you hear the word free markets what do you mean I mean, do you think there's a place – I mean, do you think there might be some places where the government does regulate too much and, um, you know, the free market should be free to compete and, and let the best products win? Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, com- companies in the United States should well, – well, workers in the United States should not have to compete with corporations that take their jobs – overseas like you go into walmart and just about everything at walmart is is made outside of the united states very few of their products are actually manufactured in the united states and uh that's because the american workers are competing with people working for pennies a day and you know that's that's a big part of the problem with what's wrong in, in this country there's not enough jobs for people there's no good paying jobs. In a company like Walmart, they pay their people slave labor wages, pretty much, their poverty wages, where they can cannot afford any health care. So the workers are required to go on Medicaid, and they're you know they they need to get food stamps because they they because their wages put them in the poverty bracket. So they're yeah, qualified so it, for food stamps, and, you know, and Walmart, they're working, they're working part time because Walmart doesn't want to pay benefits. Yeah, that sort of stuff needs to end. A big corporation like Walmart should be paying their people well, because the people that own Walmart and are running it, they're getting, you know, millions of dollars in bonuses every year, and they're, you know, their employees are not getting squat. To live on, they're getting paid poverty wages, and that, that's that's got to end. We need to raise the minimum wage to fifteen dollars an hour, at least, initially. That's that's what I think. So and that think people have that, money to spend. Right, would that help small and mid-sized businesses have a larger customer base? Yeah. Yeah, abs- absolutely. You know, once people have money in their bin, they're going to go out and spend it with these small businesses. You yeah, know, you know what? You know, funny thing is the republicans are so much against welfare but it seems like you know the major groups getting welfare is these big corporations they're the ones who are getting it in the trillions of dollars or billions of dollars at least exactly so it's all semantics i mean yeah you're against welfare it's just who's the one who's getting it you know who's getting these bailouts um you know so yeah the big banks and uh that are too big to fail. They're the ones that get the bailouts, and then they write themselves millions of dollars in bonuses with that money. Yeah, and the reason why I asked you that about the regulations, and you know, maybe it's people already past that. It's the only reason I did is because um, you know you're running in a kind of Republican district, and I just figure that's the kind of way that they want to you know frame it towards yep. you, and 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 it's not even true. I mean, so hopefully people can see pass through all that and um so uh they use stereotypes instead of arguing issues and um you know when it comes to defense when it comes to welfare and those are the two big ones 
and then yeah. they threw out the socialist label and, and stuff like that. But what about the socialism for the big corporations, you know? So, right. Um, all right. All right. Well, uh, Joe, good to talk to you today. And um, now let me ask you this in, in closing here. Is there any uh, final words of wisdom, any other events? I mean, you said you have, and, and tell us again, what the, um, when that, uh, you know, debate is coming up. That sounds very interesting. Yeah, it's uh, September 29th uh, with the League of Women Voters. I'll uh, post the information for that on uh, my website and also on uh, on my Facebook page. I've got a Facebook page, but I'll post it on the website. I've got a, a link at the top of my page for events, and I'll uh, post the exact date and time and the address for that and everything over there on my website. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And uh, so, again, we've been talking with uh, Joe Manchik, uh, the Green Party candidate for the U.S. House of Representatives, District 12 in Ohio. And um, people can find out more information on the website, manchikforcongress.wordpress.com, M-A-N-C-H-I-K, for, F-O-R, congress.wordpress.com. And so I definitely wish you good luck in the uh debates and your campaign did you um have you ever run for uh congress before joe no this is the first time i've run for any office so this is all a learning experience for me <laughs> that is great it just kind of reminds me of um i think i saw you remember who i don't know if you know who jesse ventura is he was the independent oh, yeah. governor of minnesota and um he was at like nine percent before his debate that he had got to have with the Republican and Democrat opponent. And after that debate, you know, that pretty much caused him to win that election. So, I mean, yeah, the debate yeah that's, that's, that's why the democratic impact. Republican duopoly party doesn't want to debate anyone. That's why they're keeping Jill Stein out of the presidential debates tomorrow. They, they don't want, they don't want the American people to hear anything about her. They don't want, anyone to know anything about the Green Party of the United States and all the good things we've got going and the things we'd like to do. They don't want competition. Shutting Jill out of the debates. I think that's what um, Nelson Rockefeller once was known for quoting, uh, competition is a sin. That's, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, from the perspective of a monopoly, of course, or a duopoly, um, well, any final words of wisdom here, uh, Joe? And we again, we do appreciate your time here and informing our public here. And again, this full interview will be seen in about 24 hours at libertarianprogressive.com, where you can see all our interviews this year. Any final words of wisdom, Joe? Well, I'd just like to encourage everyone to go out and vote for their Green Party candidates on the ballot. We've got over 200 people running for offices with the Green Party all across the United States. Uh, and that are going to be on the ballots on November 8th. So uh, I I would encourage everyone to vote for all of their Green Party candidates on the ballot and to not vote for any Democrats or Republicans. I'm never going to vote for another Democrat or Republican ever again. I haven't voted for one since I voted for Ralph Nader the first time back in uh, 96. And, uh yeah. People can visit GP, stands for GreenParty.org, and um, hey, you never know. The time is going to come, and we never know what when that time is. Um, keep in mind, the Republican Party once was a third party as well, and you know Abraham Lincoln, you know, was a third party candidate. So and so were the Republicans right. at one point. So it's possible. We don't know what's hap- going to happen, and we don't know the likelihoods. But at this point. Um, you know, I think responsible media will cover all the candidates equally and uh, and not call anything before, you know, the people get to decide who to pick. Um, well, Joe, it's an absolute pleasure. Um, good luck in your campaign, and thank you for joining us tonight. I hope you have an excellent Sunday evening. Thanks again. Thank you, John.